before we get into talking about Infinity War, uh, we wanted to thank our sponsors, Boss Play. Boss Play is an escape room out in Oceanside, California. You can find yeah. it. You can find out more about them by going to their website. <laughs> what? You make this so hard. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. <laughs> you, you, you interjected and then you started laughing at yourself. <laughs> you can find out more about them over on their website, www.boss-play.com. They have uh, two different escape rooms and I believe they're working on a third. I don't know if they're replacing one. But I did guess what it was over on Facebook. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, yeah, I did see that. That was, I was funny. I was pretty amazing, just got to say. Roughly amazing. We'll say that. Mm, fairly accurately amazing. We'll say adequately amazing. <laughs> so their next room is going to be a, uh, was it a space theme? And I guessed yes. Apollo 13, which... I think Apollo 13 is the perfect version of an escape room. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so what I would do is I would put it underwater because you can't really send people into space. It's not that practical yet. But not with that attitude. Put them underwater and then make it so that they have an hour to land, you know, in quotes. Mm -hmm. Or water just floods the whole room. Oh yeah, I like that. And that the stakes way, are high. Yeah, you the really are real. you get some some high stakes going. But I don't think that uh, Boss Play is going that far with it. I think they're they're looking more for fun than more practical uh, uh, killing people. It's probably less about the death and more about the just the practicality of building an underwater escape room. Yeah, that's true. And then that like might be what it having is. it function day in and day out. Yeah, because you got to dry everything out each time. The cost is going to be exponential. Yeah, that's good. that's a good point. So, go uh, go check them out and uh, let them know that we sent you, and uh, they might they might charge you more. Just the fair warning. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you listen to the podcast? There, it's a five dollar surcharge. <laughs> Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. You finally saw it, right? I finally saw it. What was your opinion of Infinity War overall? Wait, before we get into Here, that, before we get deal. into that, uh -huh. did Spider Man say future or field trip? He definitely said field trip. And like to me, it felt very obvious, but that also could be just because I was listening for it. So, Rin from Rin's Reviews, he sent me uh -huh. a message and said, he definitely said future. Oh, no, he definitely didn't. And I went and watched it again, and I heard uh -huh. future again. I, I I swear I very clearly heard field trip. I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's very, very close. Okay, it, let's just say he did say future. Yeah. It, that doesn't make sense for the rest of the whole movie. Well, I mean, unless... So, my original theory... <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. Sorry. <laughs> My original theory was that Dr. Strange sent him back a few minutes from the future. So mm -hmm. he, he showed up at the fight and things weren't going well. So Dr. Strange sent him back in time to even the odds better. So it was going to be like a five minute time change. Okay. But since that didn't happen, they didn't like ever reference that. I was like, oh, he must be from really far in the future. And he's they've come back to try to fix everything in a different way. Mm. I think you're just completely wrong. I, it could be. It, I mean, like I said, it, it's, here's, it's, here's very, it's very close. If he's from the future, and if he's from that far in the future where they know everything that's going to happen, mm -hmm. he did not do a good job trying to stop anything. Like, hey, guys, look, I'm from the future. This is what happens if we do this or if we don't do this. Yeah, except they're in the one timeline that Doctor Strange saw them winning. 
Yeah, I don't buy it. Yeah. I, I, he probably said field trip, but it definitely sounded like future. Close enough to where I shouldn't have been getting flack for it. Mm. <laughs> There's always a reason for you to be getting flack. I guess that's true. You've always done something. Well, what was your what was your opinion of the movie overall? Uh, so here's where we start the fight. All right, it's about I time. I like this movie. I I liked it. I don't I, I don't thought... hate it. I don't I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's well made. I think mm-hmm. uh, the story. I mean, it's Thanos' story, right? It's not really an For Avengers sure. movie, and so no. the story structure, the story arc, I think is well done. Uh, I yeah. think everything they wanted to do was good, but the ending was kind of pointless. Uh, that's okay. So, yeah, that's really my my only complaint is not necessarily the ending, but who they killed. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I wonder if Spider Man's really dead, even though they've already got two more movies planned. Yeah, well, you know, s- like they're gonna not make Spider Man movies and. Milk that cow. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we should say spoilers. Not just regular cow. (laughs) Just in case. Well, look, if you don't know by now that we spoil things when we talk about them, that's (laughs) on you. I just don't know if I'm going to title this one Infinity War. That was the more. Um, Okay. But yeah, no. So we should say who died at the end. So Thanos gets all the gemstones. Oh, that was another thing that really made people mad. I called them gemstones. In my review Ooh. on YouTube, instead of Infinity Stones, that is in poor taste. <laughs> um, infinity Stones, have some respect. <laughs> so Thanos gets all the Infinity Stones and snaps his fingers, and half of the entire population in the whole universe mm-hmm. uh, starts it's gone. Is gone. Yeah, they it start turning fade into away. Ash. And uh, so, here's the thing, I. I like that, uh huh. And I, 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 and I like. So if I, I didn't know Spider Man Two was coming out, Black Panther Two was coming out, Guardians of the Galaxy exactly. Three was coming out. If I didn't know any of that, it would have been exactly. so impactful, so much better, yeah, hundred percent better. But because Marvel has to tell you five years in advance their movie lineup, it makes yeah. it mean nothing. And you exactly. look at. Look at who's Same with Doctor Strange. Yeah, you look at who survived. Tony Stark, Thor. All the original Avengers. Yeah, exactly. And so the next movie, they are going to end up either sacrificing themselves or some of them are going to sacrifice themselves to yeah. save everyone and bring them back. Yep. And uh, it's it just, for me, what I would have liked to have seen is... Mm-hmm. Thanos get everything like it. W- no one. It would have been a bad ending. People would have been really upset about it, and so it might have been tough to do. But to end on Thanos snapping his thumb, and yeah. you don't know who disappears, you don't know who dies, and you pick up in the next movie with everyone who does turn into ash, turning into mm-hmm. ash in the beginning, and so now yeah. you are trying to save them. From the beginning, the mission is we have to save them. It's not, oh, no, we have this huge loss. We need to bring them back in next year. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. Because then... What would that change? So it would change the the um, the cliffhanger. the Because it, it felt very much like a Walking Dead cliffhanger. No, I, I get the cliffhanger. Okay, but still, okay. Between this movie and the next one, mm-hmm. where I, I think maybe Spider Man comes out, no. or maybe that's even twenty twenty. You got same it, with Guardians of the Galaxy. You, so you got so you got the it, outcome's still the same. You have Ant Man coming out next, right? And then okay. Captain Marvel coming out next, or after that, and then Avengers four. So you have two movies in between the the Avenger movies. Okay, those two so, movies are going to take place back in time. Uh, Ant Man is supposed to take place between Civil War and Infinity War, and Captain Marvel is supposed to take place in the late eighties, early nineties. So they're right. They're not going to pick. Have to imagine 
it'll have some kind of tie in, right? I my assumption for is Mar- for Captain Marvel. My well, so my assumption with Ant Man is it's going to end with the end of Infinity War. So probably Hank Pym is going to turn into Ash. That's what I was thinking at too. the end of that. And then Captain Marvel, I don't think is really going to tie in uh, with Infinity War until the post credit scene. I think it's going to go through, establish her power and how, like what she's doing and where she went. Because she's yeah. she's missing, right? Nick Fury tries calling right. her. I think the end of her movie, the post credit scene, is her getting the message. And the beginning of Nick Avengers Fury. is her yeah. showing back up. But so yeah, I can see that. So my point was, if you start the fourth Avengers with people turning to Ash, it doesn't feel like you're pulling the rug out from them, or like you know, like with Glenn's death in The Walking Dead, right. when they faked it, it really didn't mean yeah. anything when they did it the next time. And so if you start the fourth one with killing people, then when you bring them back, it doesn't feel as much like oh you. You, you just think we're dumb. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, like I said, if it was not for spy, sp- ah, it's so hard. It, it, it would have been not so much better if we didn't know that there was these movies planned already. So Black Panther was the one who ruined it for me. When I saw him oh, die. Really? Yeah. Cause Spider-Man, when Spider-Man died, I was like, well, there's Miles Morales. They've already established his uncle. So potentially maybe it's going to be Miles Morales, which is, I don't know if you know, but he, he's the black Spider-Man from the comics. Yeah. Right. So he, he's already established in the world. So I was like, okay, well, maybe they could replace him. Uh, the Guardians are, you know, a, a different type thing. They're not quite. I could buy all of them dying except for Star-Lord. Well, that that one too makes me like, okay, well, obviously these people are coming back. If it had been, um, you know, Groot and Drax and Mantis, mm-hmm. and, and and you know, only Star Lord and uh, Rocket lived, then I'd be like, oh, that could be like final. Yeah. Well, so what? But, I, eh. What I think happened was that they are actually trapped in the Soul Stone; that they're not even dead. That they're just okay. trapped inside of the stone. And that's why. So Loki, I think, is dead. Uh, oh, Loki's dead. Vision possibly may not come back. But uh, he's probably dead. I heard a, a theory that they backed him up when uh, Black Panther's sister was working on his the, the stone. Ah, uh, okay. So possibly he's his mind was saved and they can bring him back somehow. Um, and then I think Gamora is uh going to come back i think that guardian oh, really? yeah well again I think she needs to be dead I, again uh, this is another issue with marvel talking about a bunch of stuff and it, the, the frustrating part is i don't really even seek any of this stuff out it just kind of no it's just it's everywhere yeah it just kind of gets thrown at you and you hear it and i i can't forget it like it just gets stuck in my head like oh okay that's something yeah. Uh, but yeah. Guardians 3, the director said it's really going to focus on Gamora. It's going to be on her story. So my assumption is the Guardians who died, Guardians 3 is about saving her and bringing her back. Hmm. Maybe. But if that's true, I don't care for that. <laughs> well, that's... I'd rather her just stay dead. Yeah, well, that that so that's what I expected all these movies to be, or this movie to be is yeah. a huge sacrifice, you know, like so many people dying, hardly anyone making it through the movie and just, you know, um, just like heart wrenching, which I think it was for a lot of people. I think a lot of people were mm-hmm. really affected by the ending. But for me again, I, I could not care. I was just like, well, this, this doesn't mean anything. This is all going to be undone. And I know I know that it's it's a comic book movie and so the good guys are going to win in the end and I know it's a part 2. And so yeah. it's like they have to leave it on this cliffhanger. But there's a way that you could kill characters and not bring them back. 
And it's like mm-hmm. really frustrating that they didn't take that route. And the other thing that I was thinking at the time was maybe they will replace everyone. Maybe that's their plan. They're just going to replace everyone because Black Panther could get replaced by his sister. Miles Morales could replace uh, Peter Parker. Guardians, I don't know how you'd replace them, but you could probably figure something out. No, that's fine because the Guardians were, were like the Avengers, right? Where it was just this ever-changing group of people. I don't think so. So that's fine. I think I think it was. I'm pretty sure the Guardians is like a a very specific thing. Like I think it's them. Here's the thing. Everything that you're saying is right. Uh-huh. But there's no way there's no way ever that they would potentially upset people by getting rid of Tom Holland or uh, the guy who played Black Panther. Those guys bring in so much money. It would never ever happen. Yeah, Chadwick Boseman. Even if it was yeah, even if it was just because of the money. They could do it. They won't uh, ever. Well, yeah, that there's no way. So that was the point I was getting to was if it wasn't so many characters, I might have believed that that's what they're doing. But you replacing all of those characters was like, oh, that's that's too much. That's yeah. you wouldn't keep these properties going with a replacement. You could you, I could see you doing one or two. So one, maybe. Yeah. But to do so many is just clearly not permanent death. Nope. Can't be. And just like just like when Captain America dies, or uh I think I think it's actually gonna be Tony Stark. My Oh, for sure. My uh prediction for the next movie is Captain America is going to try to sacrifice himself, but Tony Stark is going to do uh Bruce Willis and Armageddon move. And uh, uh, yeah. sacrifice himself and send Captain America back, and he's going to retire or do something, hide away again. Um, and it, I think to- I think I'm pretty sure Tony Stark is going to die in the next one. I mm-hmm. I'd be kind of surprised if he doesn't. But again, I I don't know. Maybe he'll just drive off into the sunset with. No, not gonna happen. <laughs> he does. He's not. He, there's no way he makes it out of this. Yeah. Not not with a happy ending. I will be surprised if Pepper Potts is even still a person in the next movie. You think she got vaporized? Yes. Maybe. Here's here's my big thing. Right. This is what I've been thinking about since the movie ended. I, I know that I did. Well, okay. I don't want to say I know that they're not going to do this, but I don't think that they will. Yeah. Because I, it's just not as as in a while. But I want to see the effects of this. In all of the Netflix Marvel shows, mm. like people dis- just gone because you've already made it clear that it's the same universe and it takes place around the same time. So if that's true, it has to happen, right? Yeah, but is there anything coming out within the time frame? Because um, if the next, I, I don't know, if the next movie's coming out in a year. It's pretty quick because Jessica Jones 2 just came out. Right. So I I don't know. Basically, what I'm saying is I want Iron Fist to dissolve. (laughs) And anyone who was involved in in making that. Um, No, they're not going to do it. I know that they're not. But (sighs) missed opportunity. Yeah. Well, did you have fun watching Avengers at least? Oh, yeah. No, I did. I, I liked it. I thought there was a lot of good. I, I liked how it was. It had its like funny moments, but it wasn't like too much. You know, kind of mm. like how Ragnarok was felt like a comedy. Yeah, to me at least. Um, there was a lot of good stuff. Uh, I thought I I thought probably in this one my favorite character is Doctor Strange. Really? I thought he was. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about it. I thought he he did really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I like and Hulk. I like obviously. Thor. Thor is my favorite. Oh, Thor! Movie. I mean, they all were great. I wouldn't say um, that, but well, okay, not all of them. <laughs> Thor was great. Um, Thor. Thor is my favorite character in this movie, and uh, oh, really? Mm-hmm. And part of the issue that I have with Marvel movies, uh, I don't remember if I said it in the last episode that we did, but they don't really have a straight character, as in. 
to for comedic uh, purposes. You know, like you have the funny man and the straight man, whatever. Everyone is quippy. Everyone has jokes. Everyone is uh, yeah. breaking tension with a joke. And I know that's because that's who their characters are. And you, it works better in their standalone movies. But Individual when, movies. When they come together, it, it gets a lot, a lot tougher um, when there's no one who is playing against them. And yeah. with Thor, his straight man, whatever you want to call it, is kind of reality. And so he, he seemed kind of naive and like, he's just kind of a little dumb. Yeah. And he, it turns out he's not (laughs) cause he, no, he's, he, he, he's not, he just isn't used. He's, it's just a different world for him. Yeah. He just thinks differently. Like when, uh, one of my favorite lines was, oh, he's never, he's never defeated me. And rocket was like, yes, he did. He's like, well, he's never defeated me twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, no. So I, I really enjoyed him. I thought Tom Holland was great. Uh, oh, yeah. I thought um, Robert Downey Jr. was okay. He I feel he was himself. I feel like it's just kind of autopilot now for uh, Tony Stark. Like, yeah. not that he's not trying or not working hard, but I feel like he's just like, it's just so easy that it, it doesn't fill. Because Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. So he doesn't even have to act. Yeah. He just kind of does. Um, I've been seeing all over the internet about how Tom Holland improvised his death scene. I Yeah, I read that. Who cares? What a dumb... <laughs> like... It shows his depth. <laughs> it, like it was a it was a powerful moment, and I'm not like I'm not taking away anything from Tom Holland. I think he's a, a really good actor, but to like oh, that powerful moment it was all improvised. No, it was all built up, and so the way they yeah, shot they, they the were movie, like hey hey Tom we we kind of want you to just walk off the screen. He's like no, you know what? I'm gonna do a death scene instead. Well, like yeah <laughs> yeah. It was. It, it wasn't like he made up himself dying, but it, even him reacting the way he did, the emotional impact was seeing everyone dying. And so when he got scared, yeah. and you just oppose it to other people who are just fading away, it's like, oh yeah, that really has a lot of impact. But it to be like, oh wow, he improvised that dramatic moment is kind of goofy because he was dying, like. Yeah, that makes sense that you would be scared. Like I, I just, I don't know. It's like you know that part where where Bucky fell to his knees and then disintegrated. He improvised that whole thing. <laughs> no one told him how to fall. He did that. Yeah, that was all. That all came out of his experience in high school. <laughs> That's dumb. Like again, I I think he did a great job. I think it was a powerful moment, but to be so impressed that it was an improvised moment. It was just like, just be impressed that he's a good actor overall. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. So, oh man. Oh, another character that I thought was, cause I, I just like Drax, right? So I think he's funny. Oh, Drax is really funny in this. I thought he was uh, that, that scene where he's talking about being invisible. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he, he's still like eating. Yeah. I, th- I don't know. I thought that was funny. Yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I I, I, I like. Uh, I thought Rocket was was pretty funny. Like I didn't care for him in the second Guardians. I thought he was. He he kind of bothered me. Yeah. Um, but I like when he was talking to Bucky when they first got to. I think it was in Wakanda. Well, I want to see. He's like, I want to see a, a Bucky Rocket assassin movie. Right. That was. <laughs> Just like he's like, hey, he's like, how much for that gun? He's like, uh, it's it's not for sale. He's like, how much for the arm? And he he doesn't say anything. He's like, I'm gonna get that arm. <laughs> but like for the two of them to go and try to kill someone, I think would be a really funny movie to see. Yeah. Um, but I I, I enjoyed. Uh, well, I guess I didn't enjoy the moment when um, Star Lord was going to kill Gamora, right when he's about to shoot her, and yeah. Thanos turns the bullet or the laser, or whatever into bubbles. Yeah. The whole theater that I was sitting with 
was mostly Thai people. Uh-huh. And they started laughing so hard. Like it was the funniest. That's how it was, here. That's how it was yeah. there. Yeah. I, everyone laughed. I was like, it was, it wasn't even like a nervous laughter, like a tension breaking laughter. It was like, no, it was like, haha bubbles. Yeah. And I was so annoyed because it was such a strong moment. And I thought I, Chris yeah. Pratt did really good. And the laughter was like aggressively bad, like a, a aggressively. Yeah, it was the same here. It was weird. Um, I, And I didn't understand the choice of the bubbles. Like it, it felt like too. Too comical. Yeah. Too, too whimsical. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, that's a small. Should have just been a Nerf gun. <laughs> Just like a little bullet shoots out and hits her and falls. And I thought I thought Drax and uh, Mantis were dead when he uh, chopped them up. Oh yeah, so did I. I was like, oh no, and that's what I was focused on the whole time. Yeah, but uh, they came right back, and it that it just felt I don't know. Like people people keep saying things like, oh, you have to respect their willingness to do what they did in this movie. And, uh, yeah, I'm willing to kill off anyone if I know they're going to come back. Yeah. If it doesn't matter, then what's it matter? (laughs) There is no, yeah. I don't have to face backlash because it's not permanent. Like when I play Grand Theft Auto, Mm -hmm. I'm much more likely to shoot at the police or drive on the wrong side of the road or jump off the top of a building than I would be in real life because I know my character can just come back and my actual person cannot. (laughs) Yeah, like there's a big exactly. difference when it feels permanent and when it feels uh, like you can just undo everything. Yeah. So I I don't know I again I think the Russos did a great job I think they made a great movie but in in the broad scheme of everything or the when you the grand the grand scheme of it all it it kind of fell flat it kind of it's better than an Ultron. But uh, it's not in my top five, I don't think. Um, it might be top five, maybe. Like it's it is good, and it if you could watch part four directly after, I think it would be a much better movie. Well, yeah. So that's what I was thinking too. I was like, this this almost would be better, like for people who are too young, like my kids or our kids, to watch. Yeah in the future enjoy it more. where they don't they don't know what all the upcoming movies are or what you know and, and just like oh this is happening who knows what's next well so that was something i was thinking about was uh when imperial or imperial when empire strikes back came out uh-huh. did they know a third movie was on the way or did they think that was the uh, end did they think oh this you mean the audience yeah uh, that I don't know. I know obviously Lucas did plan like nine from like the beginning. Yeah, that's what he's. That's but what I remember. About. That's what he says at least. Um, but like, but I don't know. Think, think if you, I'd be surprised if if no, if you just thought that that could be the end. Yeah, like if you thought Infinity War was the final movie ever. Yeah. Or like if you didn't know anything else was coming out, that ending would be so powerful. Oh, for sure. But I don't know. We've gotten in the loop. We've already said all this. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I mean, theoretically, couldn't they just get the gauntlet and reverse time? Uh, I think that's kind of what happens in the comics. Okay. I think Nebula, who is still alive in the movies, gets the yes gets the gauntlet and reverses time. Um. I a pair. Oh, so, go ahead. There's, hmm, this is an annoying thing that I know that, uh, I don't like, <laughs> there's, there's pictures of them making the movie uh-huh. of a lot of the characters in Avengers 1 again. Uh, okay. I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. So there's pictures of, of the characters now for the next movie where it looks like they're back in Avengers 1. Oh, okay. Here, I just sent you a picture. You see what I'm saying? 
Yeah. As in they go back in time to that point? Yep. Or someone does or something like that? Yep. So there's a good chance the next movie is going to be a time travel movie, which i not a fan of. Here's the thing. I love time travel movies, but there's a there's a time and a place. This is not it. <laughs> yeah, no. It doesn't work in an already established universe. Yeah. If it's just a... It, you have to have very strict rules to make time travel work. And yes, when you go back to fix things, it starts getting really convoluted because then why not Here's- <laughs> fix something else or why not... Why couldn't someone else go even further back and undo what you're doing? Like, yeah. Here's the thing about time travel movies that I think, and and it bothers me whenever I see it. Mm-hmm. And I think this is what people get wrong or they don't think about it. And, and I'll I'll use Back to the Future as an example. Yeah. If you own a time machine mm-hmm. that you can go forward or backwards in time, How about a photo booth. There was, or a photo booth. There was literally no reason for any urgency. Right, like yeah. Marty, hurry! We have to go to the future. Your kids, They're like, what's the rush? Just go You're back. going to a to a designated time. Yeah. You're not. Nothing's going to happen until you you go. You could seriously spend ten years here and then go. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no. <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. Once you establish that you have a time machine that you can go anywhere, yeah. like there is no ur- There's no need for any urgency whatsoever. Yeah. Now, time travel is a difficult device to use in a movie. It is. It's even more difficult to use in real life. But uh, <laughs> that is very true. Anything else about Infinity War? Um, hmm. No. I mean, I, I think, I think it, it's almost guaranteed that Stark dies. Or... He, at least that he is the 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 main catalyst to the ending. Mm-hmm. He's going to be Jesus. Only because Doctor Strange, right? He 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 looked into whatever was 14 million different outcomes yeah. and there's only one that they win. Yeah. And which was another thing. That that's basically a time travel issue too, right? Like, oh it kind of yeah. It, I thought that was an rem- interesting choice. It removes all the stakes because you're like, well, they're clearly in the winning option, and even Doctor Strange is like, or Tony asked, "Why did you give it to him?" He's like, "This was the only way." It was the only way. And I was like, "Yeah, oh, okay." He's, which is what I'm I'm getting at. The, in in his one you know future that they win, mm-hmm. Tony Stark has to be alive. So that's why he was willing to give up the Infinity Stone because that was the only way to keep him alive. You know what else is dumb? Is a lot of people on the internet are upset with Chris Pratt. I was going to say that. They're like real life hating him for what he did. I'm like, what, you think it was going to be that easy? (laughs) Come on. Someone had to mess this up. Oh, man. It's just dumb. Like, that's the thing. Movies are directed. There's a writer, there's a director, there's producers. The Except the actors for Tom Holland, he's rogue. Yeah, that's he does true. all of his scenes. Everything's improvised by himself. Um yeah. they don't they don't choose what's happening. No. It, it's 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 dumb. If anything, you could be mad at the Russo brothers for writing it like that. Um do you think that we'll see Hawkeye again after his family disintegrates? Yeah. yeah, I think that's how the next one's gonna open up. But can you okay, because he, he kind of lives almost in isolation, right? Mm-hmm. So can you imagine being him or you know, anyone else on in the world always, that's not around other things? I always imagine being <laughs> Hawkeye. <laughs> that's true. And then like your family just disintegrates, but there's no no explanation. Explanation, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone, you know, all the Avengers, they knew what was happening. They, you know, but no one else does. Like, they're just gone. Yeah. Like, what do you, how do, what do you even do? How do you even react to that? Do you just grab your bow and arrow? I'm like, all right, <laughs> got to go get someone. That's not a you. Like, euthanism, where, where do you even go? From? No. no. <laughs> like, what is your first move? Where do you even go from there? Uh, well, I mean, I you're know, an Avenger, crazy. so. You probably go try to find yeah. other Avengers. That would be your first move. I don't buy it. 
Also, I thought it would have been a lot more powerful for the Guardians. Is if, I mean, if they were going to kill all of them but one, it should have been Groot, right? Because one... He's already dead. He's already kind of died, but two... Well, no, he, you know he is dead, right? The original Groot? Well, yeah. That was a big yeah, deal for is, people on the internet. This is new Groot. Um, but for him to have to... He, he's like a teenager or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, age he is. And it, then to be by himself... Yeah. And not have any of his other people to to help him or you know this and that, um, because it was it was Thor, right? Who could understand him? Uh, could he? Yeah, I thought so. I don't remember that part. I'm trying to, uh, there was someone. Yeah, it was it was Thor when they picked him up on the ship and said something. I thought I was pretty sure that he could understand him. He's like, wait, you can understand him? Mm. And he make some comment about like taking speech or language lessons or whatever gotcha i thought that would be better if it was just him left you know yeah and he's like he doesn't know any of these other people he can't really communicate with them i don't know but it also i i I get the whole rocket having to see Groot die again it was pretty powerful yeah another another question i I saw online which i think is a a great question and kind of a frustrating thing because they established stuff is Bucky, mm-hmm. when he fades away, his arm goes with him? Mm-hmm. And it really shouldn't have. It just as much as anything that, I mean, their clothes are disintegrating, so. I guess, yeah, I guess that's true. But it would have been funny if his arm fell down and Rocket ran over and, and then, took it. And Yeah, 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 I, I, I think I saw the same thing. Uh, oh, speaking of that. Yeah. <laughs> Left behind. <laughs> I, I, I knew that's where this was going. I uh, And I was looking forward to it. I had to watch Left Behind this week, and it was awful. Wow. I, I'm i so pleased with that choice. <laughs> it was terrible. It was so I, tough to get through. It looked really, really bad. Mm-hmm. I watched your video, and even that, even, you know, the the bridged version or whatever is like, Oh, this is awful. <laughs> I was like, and he probably cut out all the really bad stuff. Yeah. On the uninteresting stuff. This is truly awful. It's, it's really tough to get through. Also, I said it in the, the video, but pretty sure God was the bad guy in this movie from a, oh, for sure. a storytelling structure. Now they're going to put him on trial. <laughs> and it's going to be a crossover with God's, God's, not, God's dead. not dead. Oh man. But yeah, so there's that video up on YouTube. If you want to go check out me suffer, uh, you don't have to watch me suffer the whole time, but you do get to see. Well, no, I'm saying the it's not the whole movie, so you don't ha- oh, you don't yeah. get to watch me suffer for the whole two hours, but you do get to see the effect that two hours had on my life and uh, watch me slowly die from my eyes. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad. We will be back soon with Game Over Man over on Patreon coming out on the 13th and Doubt with Mike Fallick coming out on the 16th. For a dollar, you can get access to that stuff when it comes out over on Patreon. It comes out two weeks early and you can help choose who has to pay the next punishment punishment between, between Taylor and I. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so also thank you to Boss Play again. They've been sponsoring our show for the last few months, and we really appreciate them. Woohoo!